Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be proving a trigonometric identity. Prove that in a triangle, tangent A plus tangent B plus tangent C equals tangent A times tangent B times tangent C. So ABC is a triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle. And we're going to prove that the this identity holds for any triangle. So I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's take a look at the first one first. So the first method. I'm going to be using the degree symbol instead of the radians. I'm only going to write it once just to let you know. A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. All right. I'm not going to use the degree symbol, but that's what I mean from now on. So for me, if you isolate A plus B, you can write it as 180 minus C. And now at this point, I want to prove that basically we've done a problem like this before where we had x plus y plus z equals x times y times z. If you remember, we were looking for integer solutions and we got the solution 1, 2, and 3 and of course the permutations of that as well. And this is kind of similar to that one, but this is just for a triangle. Now, I have this equality a plus b is equal to 180 minus c. I'm going to tangent both sides. And what happens if you tangent both sides? You get tangent a plus b equals tangent 180 minus c. Now let's go ahead and expand the left hand side using the sum formula. We have tangent a plus tangent b divided by 1 minus tangent a times tangent b. Now how can we simplify the right hand side? Well, you can use a difference formula, but that's not needed. If you think about an acute angle C, and even if C isn't acute, this is going to be true. You have an angle like C, let's say it's acute for now, for simplicity's sake. It's supplement. They will have the opposite tangents. Why? Because their cosine values are going to be opposites and their sine values are going to be the same. Or if you look at the tangent axis, this length is going to be positive and it's going to be negative for the second quadrant. So in other words, instead of tangent 180 minus C, we can easily write negative tangent of C. Great. Now we're going to manipulate this equation and that's going to give us this identity. Let's go ahead and see how that works. I'm going to cross multiply tangent A plus tangent B equals. I'm going to multiply 1 minus tangent A tangent B by negative tangent C. So that's going to give me something like negative tangent C plus tangent A times tangent B times tangent C. So what I did was basically distribute the negative tangent C over 1 minus tangent A tangent B and that's how I got this equality. Okay, that's the right hand side but I want to get all the tangents uh, into the sum. So I'm going to get, get the negative tangent C on the left hand side so let's add tangent C to both sides. That's going to give me tangent A plus tangent B plus tangent C equals tangent A times tangent B times tangent C. Great. So this concludes the first method. Uh, as you know, we were trying to prove that in a triangle, this is always true. And that happens to be true. Now, what happens if A, B or C is 90 degrees? Of course, we get a really weird situation where tangent alpha is going to approach infinity and both the right hand side and the left hand side is going to approach infinity if you are talking about limits. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the second method here. The second method is even though it's similar to the first method, it has some different ideas. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so with the first method, if you remember, we isolated the C on one side of the equation, or I should say A plus B maybe, and then we, ta we tangented both sides, if that's a word. In this case, we're not going to really put any, uh, anything on the other side. We're going to keep everything as is. So we'll start with the left hand side. So we have tangent A plus tangent B plus tangent C. And then since A plus B plus C is 180 degrees, a plus B plus C is 180. From here, I can basically isolate the C this time instead of isolating A plus B. And I can write it as 180 minus the quantity A plus B. So instead of writing tangent uh, C, I can just turn this into tangent A plus tangent B plus tangent 
180 tangent of 180 minus the quantity a plus b, which is equivalent to c. Okay, now again, I'm not dealing with the right-hand side yet. I started off with the left-hand side, and my goal is to get what's on the right-hand side, which is the product of tangents. So now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use that identity again, tangent 180 minus alpha. you got to remember, a plus b doesn't have to be an acute angle for this to work because you can also verify this with the formula. Tangent 180 minus alpha is always negative tangent alpha because first and second quadrants will give you opposite values. So we can write this as negative of tangent a plus b. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how this sum or difference, whatever, turns into a product. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So now, the next step is going to be using the formula for tangent A plus B. Let's go ahead and expand it. That's going to give us tangent A plus tangent B divided by 1 minus tangent A times tangent B. Great. Now, I do have a more complicated looking expression. Now, but don't worry, we're going to simplify this. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. This has a denominator of 1. If you multiply the first fraction by 1 minus tangent A tangent B, both the top and the bottom, you're going to get the following. So we're multiplying tangent A plus tangent B by 1 minus tangent A times tangent B. And then from that, we're subtracting a sum. But when you subtract the sum, everything will be negated, so it's going to look like this, negative tangent A minus tangent B. All right, so let's go down, write the fraction bar. And now, since we made a common denominator, our common denominator is going to be 1 minus tangent A tangent B. Again, this is complicated, but, or this is complicated looking, as I should say, well, this can be simplified. Now, notice that when you distribute tangent A plus tangent B over 1, you're going to get tangent A plus tangent B. And then when you multiply tangent A plus tangent B by tangent A times tangent B, so in other words, like you're multiplying a sum by a product, you're going to get something like this, minus tangent A tangent B. And then I'm not going to distribute it, just write it as a sum for now, because later on I could just simplify it. And then uh, the next thing is going to be we have the product tangent A plus tangent B, uh, we can just multiply this by uh, tangent A tangent B. So we can just do the following. Uh, let's see. Uh, we distributed this over that, and then we distributed this over that. And the next step is going to be, actually, I, it's not supposed to be that way. I should stop here, right? Uh, let me see. We have to put the parentheses. There we go. Okay. So I'm only going to distribute that part, and then I'm going to subtract the tangent A and tangent B. Here we go. Okay, great. And then I'm just going to divide this whole thing by 1 minus tangent A times tangent B. Great. Now notice that tangent A minus tangent A is equal to 0. Tangent B cancels out, and we end up with something like this. Again, this is not very simple looking, but here's what we can do. We can separate the product like negative tangent A times tangent B, and then that could be multiplied by tangent A plus tangent B divided by 1 minus tangent A times tangent B. Now, this expression should look familiar to you because this is the formula for sum of two tangents, remember? So we can basically replace the expression in the box with tangent of A plus B. But what is that supposed to mean? We still didn't get our product, but we're almost there. Now, remember, A plus B plus C is 180. So A plus B can be written as 180 minus C. So I, if I replace A plus B with 180 minus C, again, 180 is in degrees, we get the following. Negative tangent A, tangent B, multiply by tangent 180 minus C. As you'll remember, tangent 180 minus C can be written as negative tangent C. And when you multiply two negatives, you'll get a positive. And this is going to give you tangent A times tangent B times tangent C. So we proved that in a triangle ABC, tangent A plus tangent B plus tangent C can be written as tangent A 
times tangent B times tangent C. And as I said earlier, you can basically use the tangent values 1, 2, and 3, and that will satisfy this equation. In other words, if tangents are those values, then it's a triangle. All right, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.